हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम यू आर टू दिस न्यू वीडियो सो इन माई प्रीवियस वीडियो आई हैड डिस्कस्ड विद द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ अरेज ऑफ टू नॉन आइसोट्रोपिक पॉइंट सोर्सेस एंड अलॉन्ग विद दैट वी हैव सीन द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ पैटर्न मल्टीप्लीकेशन विच वी गॉट द एक्सप्रेशन फ्रॉम द नॉन आइसोट्रोपिक पॉइंट सोर्सेस ओके हाउ द इंडिविजुअल पैटर्न एंड अरे पैटर्न आर गेटिंग एडेड अप एंड मल्टीप्लाइज विद रिस्पेक्ट टू मैग्नीट्यूड एंड फेसेस वी हैव सीन इट इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो so those who have not seen that video please go and watch it it would be available in this playlist just before this video okay so there are few concepts left in this module 4 which is which is yet to be covered that i am going to cover in the upcoming few videos after that module 4 we are going to be winding up okay yeah so quickly let us not waste much time and let us continue with the concepts first concept here now we are going to be discussing on linear array okay so this is one very important concept because based on this concept only some problems related to field patterns are going to be arising in the next video okay in the next video we are going to be discussing with some problems very easy ones but before that you need to be knowing this concept what do you mean by linear array and how the patterns are generated with respect to the electric field and how they are getting varied with respect to the angles okay so here one linear array uh, pattern is kept here this figure suggests that it is an array of n isotropic point sources with equal amplitude and equal phase that is equal spacing so here n isotropic point sources so so these are the point sources which are kept here n number of point sources are kept okay there are there is no one definite count of point sources and this is the field generated to distant point p and it is given by dr cos phi okay so this is the angle psi where the uh, phi is varying from 0 to 90 degree in this plane we have kept it okay so let n be n any positive integer total field at the distant point p in the direction phi is given by this expression here that is with respect to n point sources e is given by electric field e is equal to 1 plus e to the power j psi plus e to the power j 2 psi goes on up to e to the power j n minus 1 into psi okay so name this as equation 1 why it is 1 because here since the point source is kept at the origin side so that's why this would be e to the power j Zero psi. Okay, so that's why this is uh, multiplied by zero. So this whole term would be zero, right? So e to the power zero is one. So that's why we are getting here one. Okay. So here amplitude is taken as unity in every case uh, because you see here it would be uh, changing with respect to one uh, term, right? So if it is zero here, it would be one, two, three. Goes on the difference is one. So that's why the amplitude here is taken as unity. and this psi this angle psi is the phase difference okay that is given by dr cos phi plus the alternate phase difference so that you should not be considering for this case here where dr is equal to beta d so this is the introduction part with respect to n isotropic point sources how the linear array is uh, given so now you see here at a distant point field from source 2 is advanced by angle psi with respect to source 1 and it goes on Field from source three is advanced to advanced by two psi with respect to source two, and it goes on with respect to source n number of point sources. So here equation one is a geometric series. So this is in the form of a geometric series. So now what I am doing is I am just multiplying equation one by e to the power j psi. So what you would be getting, we would be getting on both sides. This should be multiplying. So e into e to the power j psi that is equal to e to the power j psi, and we have e to the power j two psi because it's getting multiplied so powers would be getting added plus e to the power j n psi okay it goes on this is again a geometric series which you have got by multiplying e to the power j psi so name this as equation 2 now now subtract equation 2 from 1 that is e minus e into e to the power j psi is equal to 1 minus e to the power j n psi because if we subtract all these terms which is there in between would be getting cancelled out e to the power j psi j2 psi everything goes we have be left with only 1 minus e to the power j n psi okay so here you group e to uh, e is common take it outside 1 minus e to the power j psi is equal to 1 minus e to the power j n psi so here our final expression e is equal to 1 minus e to the power j n psi divided by 1 minus e to the power j psi so this is the expression for electric field when we have n isotropic point sources okay so this could be further be simplified if we want to get the phase the actual phase you how we could be further simplifying this as 
with the, with respect to that we should be generating one uh, trigonometric function sine so what i am doing is i am taking e to the power j n psi by 2 common from the numerator okay and i am uh, getting uh, the remaining term as e to the power j n psi by 2 minus e to the power minus j n psi by 2 divided by 2j why because we have taken divided by 2 right so that's why if we multiply we would be getting this term itself here if if you multiply these two terms that is 1 in the same way in the denominator term i am taking e to the power j psi by 2 common outside so we would be getting e to the power j psi by 2 minus e to the power minus j psi by 2 divided by 2j so this is equal to sin n psi by 2 and this is equal to sin psi by 2 and whatever the phase which is getting generated that is named as zeta here okay so e to the power j zeta okay whatever the phase difference this part is there right that is given as G zeta that is equal to e to the power j n psi by 2 divided by e to the power j psi by 2 okay or you could be writing it as zeta is equal to n minus 1 into psi by 2 okay so that is not required just to represent it they have named it okay where this angle zeta is referred to as the phase or the center point of the array okay so this is called as the center point with respect to the angles which are formed with respect to center that is called as z angle zeta so if phase is referred to the center point of the array then the electric field uh, would be looking somehow like this this would be completely equal to zero why because it is referred to the center point of the array that is with respect to origin so if this is zero then this would be e to the power zero one so we would be left with only this part right so that is electric field would be equal to sin n psi by 2 divided by sin psi by 2 so this is the actual electric field expression which you need to be knowing for a linear array okay so with respect to this expression we are going to be solving a lot of problems in the upcoming video so this is the main expression which you, which you need to be knowing now if we want to be getting the answer for electric field with respect to the number of point sources in this case it is n isotropic point sources right so that's why what i am doing is differentiate numerator and denominator so if we differentiate numerator what we get n n by 2 cos n psi by 2 divided by 1 by 2 cos psi by 2 so 2 2 gets cancelled so we are left with n cos n psi by 2 divided by cos psi by 2 now what i am doing when the psi that is the phase difference the, if we put that equal to 0 then we would be getting n cos 0 divided by cos 0 cos 0 is 1 it gets cancelled so we would be left with n so when psi is equal to 0 that is if it is referred at the center point of the array angle also if it is 0 then we would be getting the total electric field is equal to the number of isotropic point sources so whatever the number of isotropic point sources which is there in the particular situation that would be equal to the electric field so this is the maximum value of the electric field which we could be attaining that is equal to n why it is maximum because we cannot be predicting the number of isotropic point sources right so whatever the number of isotropic point sources which are getting generated that would be equal to the maximum electric field at that distant point p okay yeah so this is all about linear array and this is the expression which you need to be noting it down now in this with respect to this concept only we should be knowing some of the cases now where we would be having some different kinds of linear array based on the patterns generated based on the field patterns generated we should be seeing one by one the kinds of linear arrays okay so you see here first case so this is the normalizing part this is not required case one the first kind of array is called as broadside array what do you mean by broadside array which comes under this linear array category let us see what do you mean by that here in broadside array sources are in phase okay sources are kept in phase they are not out of phase so that's why the if they are in phase the value of this uh, phase difference that is ex additional phase difference that would be equal to zero and we know that this expression psi is equal to dr cos phi plus rho now if you put this equal to zero we would be getting psi is equal to dr cos phi okay so so now to make this angle uh, whatever this angle is there if you make that equal to make this equal to zero we need to be substituting the value of phi as plus or minus 2k plus 1 divided by pi by 2 where k equal to where k would be varying from 0 1 up to n okay so here if we put this equation we would be getting the phase difference phi that maximum value would be occurring at the angles of 90 degree and 270 degree so based on that the field gener field pattern generated would be somehow looking like this why because if you recall this with the case one 
where we have considered the isotropic point sources of equal amplitude and equal phase where there we would be getting the maximum values at pi by 2 and 3 by 3 pi by 2 right that is 90 degree and 270 degree so that's why if we consider that case in mind case 1 that would be somehow equal to the broadside array because here also the maximum would be occurring at 90 degree and 270 degree and this in this in this way the field pattern would be getting generated so we could be concluding by saying that maximum field is in the direction normal or perpendicular to the array in case of the broadside array so this type of array is called as broadside array so simply if they ask the definition of broadside array you should be writing that it is a kind of an array where maximum field is occurring in the direction normal to the array or perpendicular to the array with this diagram and these are the conclusions which you need to be noting it down for a broadside array okay now one more case we have that is called as end fire array what do you mean by this end fire array here the maximum radiation or the pattern value with respect to the angles occurs in the direction of the array okay that would be somehow looking like this in case of an end fire array okay this is the array axis and the radiation would be occurring along the direction of the array axis where uh, where we are having n number of point sources in this case we have considered the value of n is equal to 2 okay where maximum field is along the direction of the array here the maximum occurs at the angles of 0 degree and 180 degree that is this is 0 this is 180 okay so here the field occurs and this type of array is called as end fire array so in this end fire array only we have one special case that is called as Hansen Woodyard end fire array EFA okay so here it is same as end fire array only here what this would be doing is it would be giving you a narrower beam area and better directivity okay so that would be varying with the factor of pi by n okay so where n is the number of uh, end fire array elements which is present in that and uh, the pattern would be remaining the same it would be giving you some extra area that is the beam area would be extended along with that the if the beam area is more it would be extended then the directivity also would be getting improved okay so it is the same it is same as end fire array only it, it, it it's one difference is that it gives narrower beam area and better directivity okay so this is called as hansen woodyard end fire array and one more kind is called as scanning array what do you mean by scanning array is it is an array with the maximum field in any arbitrary direction okay the maximum field which is obtained in any of the direction that is with respect to the angle whatever angle is generated at that angle the field would be generated and that field is maximum so that is called a scanning array so for that you see here consider an array with field pattern having max in some arbitrary direction okay so i have kept one uh, angle phi where the array is maximum in some arbitrary direction which is not equal to k pi by 2 okay where here I have considered psi equal to 0 in this equation. So if we solve this that is 0 is equal to dr cos phi 1 since you have considered the angle phi 1 plus rho. Phase difference is determined by dr cos phi 1 is equal to minus dou. Cos phi 1 is equal to minus dou by dou r. Phi 1 is equal to cos inverse of minus dou by dr. Okay. Dou by dr. So this is the angle phi 1 with respect to the scanning array which we get. Okay. Now see here. Conversely by changing in the delta beam direction dou. So this dou here is called as the delta beam direction. Okay. The phi 1 which is which we have seen phi 1 phase difference can be shifted on scan. So how we can conclude is that. So the expression we have got here for phi 1 as cos inverse of minus dou by dr. So this is the angle in the field pattern and wherever the angle this angle wherever it gets shifted or scanned at that angle the we would be getting the maximum field pattern that is the maximum electric field at that place okay so that would be F, uh, changing with this factor of dou here that is called as delta beam direction phase phi 1 phase difference can be shifted or scanned that is we could uh, by the variation of this value we would be getting the different phase difference phi 1 angle would be getting changed and, and at that angle the field would be getting shifted or scanned so this type of array is called as scanning array okay so with respect to this dou factor we could be shifting or scanning the uh, phase difference whatever we generated with respect to that phase difference whatever angle we get at that angle we would be getting the maximum electric field and the field pattern would be get, getting generated at that angle okay yeah so this is meant by scanning array and these are the four special cases which i wanted to tell you guys broadside end fire 
Hansen Woodyard and scanning array so if they ask under linear array uh, mention the four special cases you, you should be writing these many points okay yeah so this notes I'm going to be pinning in the videos description of module 4 go and access it it is uh, written in a very neat manner so that it would be very very beneficial for you in the exam time so that's why please read this notes and uh, once uh, let me know about uh, how these videos would be helpful to you guys or not okay any suggestions or anything should be mentioning it in the comments yeah so that's all guys we'll see you in the next video with some problems stay tuned thank you